Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to go into an, adva an advanced rank X example here. Now, this is going to be a breakout uh, session from a much larger learning summit uh, workshop that we had uh, very recently. But what came out of that was just how unique the rank X function is, especially when you put it into a range of different contexts on your report page. And so that's, that's, that's what I want to show you here. All, uh, basically, all some of the many things you need to think about when, you, when using the rank X function. I, I honestly want to say that this, this rank X function to me is one of the more, it's one of the more confusing uh, functions you can actually use. Uh, and I, I found that myself. And the, the reason why it is, is because it can throw you up like many different results and you can think that, oh, okay, this actually looks kind of right. But then you realize that it's not actually right. And you have to go and re rework it a little bit. And I, I've fallen into this trap even myself a few times. So I want to just highlight a few things that I just check for now and um, then techniques I use in my formulas to actually get these, get the answers that I um, that I originally desired. Okay. And so this was a really cool example of um, of sort of we wanted to see sort of a lot of ranking insights. I wanted to see the county ranking, I wanted to see my state ranking, my state regions ranking, but I wanted to see them all in one matrix, and that's where it becomes a little bit trickier managing the context of the calculation, the many contexts that you could have in a in a particular result. Okay, so I've got a bit of a setup here. So we've got we've got I've created a table, and this is what I always recommend when you're trying to work these things out. Okay. I've got my state regions, I've got my state, and I've got my county. Okay, so what I want to work out is I want to work out the ranking of my counties. Okay? So down this column here, you see all my counties, and I want to work out the rank of that county. Now, when I utilize this particular function, right, I want to show you. Originally, I thought I had my table set up like this, and I thought, wow, that's great. I've now got the correct ranking result. And so I'll just bring in my total, my sales here as well. Okay, so you come here and you look, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like I've got the right results. Looks all, all great, right? My formula's working. But then you realize when, when, you, when I started layering on this other context to the result, well, this is incorrect at all. This is actually um, accumulating up each different county which is located in each different um, different states and different state regions and so you only actually pick that up if you didn't you know if you didn't really know what you were doing you would only pick that up which I have to say was sort of me you know uh, <laughs> because I'm obviously not from from the US and I was working with a US data set and so you know I, I quickly realized that you know this isn't correct okay and this is where you need to start thinking about okay well what's the context of the calculation how can I change that context to make sure that I'm actually getting the correct ranking because what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to get the overall rank of each different county right regardless of what is selected on the report page I want to maintain the overall rank okay and the other great thing about this particular result is what I also enabled is say I did select a particular um, state say Colorado my formula here updated as well. So if you had something filtered as well, you'd think, oh, okay, great. This looks this looks like it's working. And say I wanted to say I wanted to not select something there, but I wanted to select something in my state. See, I'll show you in a second. I've worked all of these things into the formula. Say I wanted to select the um, let's say northeast. You'll see here. Look, it looks great. You know, uh, it also looks like it's a proper ranking, and looks like it's doing doing the work as it should. Okay, so let's have a look at the particular um, function I've got here. So this is this is. Let's just start with this. Actually, this isn't the one I'm using, but this is it's very similar. Whenever you use rank X, you think this particular part is the key. You need to be able to. Um, think about what the context is and then manipulate the context within the rank X formula. So go and find the table to iterate through to then create the ranking, okay, for that particular result or that particular row um, in the table, okay. And in this particular case, if I want to work out the ranking of my counties, well, you'd think, okay, well, I'll just place all in there and I'll be able to 
are virtually going to work through every single county, regardless of the initial context, and then rank rank the particular row. Okay. So we, if you have something really simple, that's absolutely fine. But this can get a little bit tricky when you also layer on slicer context as well. And that's why I've had to use here all selected because I want this to update depending on what selection I have in the slicer, okay? And so you gotta remember when, uh, when we're um, placing additional context on, onto a result or we wanna change the context of a calculation, we need to make sure we utilize calculate. Now what happens here is the filters inside of calculate do their work first, okay? Before this goes and evaluates. So what happens when I select something here is this particular um, overall table that we're we're working um, we're working over for the rank X is adjusted. The context is adjusted by whatever filters we have inside of calculate. In this particular um, case, we've got a, some context coming from the region slicer, and so it's being um, adjusted here. Uh, in this particular instance, but say for instance we also selected here, well this would adjust as well um, for us too. Okay, so there's sort of sim some of the, some, there's actually some of the more simpler stuff around RankX, even though I know that that itself is a little bit complex, but definitely, look, this is not an easy, this is, as I say, this is not an easy function, um, but you know, if you can get your mind around um, the nuances of this, you, 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 you'll know that you have a very thorough understanding of context inside of Power BI, which is very, very key. Okay, so let's now have a look at this particular formula here, county updated, right? Because this is the formula that I wanted um, to always show, regardless of anything that is selected, either from a slicer or anything that is in my, um, in, in the particular table, adding even more context to the calculation, right? Even though these are these are these are basically the same thing, but hopefully you get you get what I mean. It could be something else from the regions table in, in here. I want to make sure this always 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 stays as the overall rank, regardless of uh, what is selected. So the overall ranking, I'll just unselect everything, and you'll see now. I want this to always just change this round be unique. Every county had to have a unique number here, right? From one to whatever. Okay, so this is the function or the formula that I use for this. Let's have a look at this part first, okay? Actually, no, what we need to look at is there wasn't, and this is quite interesting actually, um, there wasn't in my regions table, there wasn't actually, there was no way to decipher what was a, a unique county, interestingly enough. And so what I needed to do was I needed a little bit of a workaround. And so what I needed to do was I created this other uh, column here called full county, which included the county, the state, and um, the region. So that would always give me a unique county because I do believe there's not the same county name in any state. Okay, so that would uh, this would give me the most unique column I could get, right? So then, now that I had that, I knew I could actually go and work across um, a virtual table of um, whatever, um, all of the counties that are in um, the states, okay? Or in this particular um, data set. So, we first of all though need to manipulate or manage the context before we go and do this, right? So what I had to do here was I first needed, okay, I first needed to remove all context from the regions table in, in, in its entirety, okay? So any context coming from the regions table does not exist at this point in time. What I did have to do though, is I lay it on top, I added back, and this is what you can do with filters, uh, values, sorry, I added back the full county context. We could have referenced every single column individually in this all, uh, as alls here, but what I did is I just said, let's get rid of everything from regions and bring back only the full county, okay? Then once that context has been manipulated inside a calculate, then rank X does its work from there, okay? And then we say, go and rank, uh, go and work through every single county at every single row here, work out what the sales are, and then return the rank of that particular uh, full county, region, state, and county. And that's how we now get one, two, X, okay? And it also just does not matter now 
what filters or slices we place here because what happens is this all regions just ignores it and in, in uh, like it ignores everything okay it ignores any filter that could come from regions and then we are always getting the overall number now no matter what sort of context or slices or filters we put on our page or um, inside of the table okay so we're gone we actually gone a little bit longer than i wanted to but it's just such an interesting topic i, I just really enjoy going going through it um actually just how um you know how how it all works so hopefully hopefully you've learned a lot here hopefully you've learned a lot about rank x and some of the um, more advanced things that you can do when you can truly truly understand you know the context of your results inside of power bi really recommend diving into that particular topic there's a lot of that this inside of enterprise dna online some of the paid content um, from enterprise dna so if you do want to venture into that especially the mastering dax course that is uh, that is something i highly recommend um, that's i'm specifically talking about sort of context etc okay all the best here um hopefully you enjoyed this one definitely throw the video a like if you if you did and don't forget to subscribe to enterprise dna tv okay take care all the best